Remember, this is Chris Watako with the LaborDaySingles.org uh, retreat, as well as Chris Watako Ministries, the Singles Network, and Intentional Relationship Solutions. Let me tell you, so I just got back from being on tour, and it has been such a blessing. I have uh, been at churches that I've never spoken at before. I have uh, been around singles and women uh, that I've never ministered to. I have uh, it's been wonderful just to meet all these new people. And I'm going to tell you something. Uh, and those of you who've been following the ministry, been a part of the ministry, back in January, we had a night of prayer for single adult ministry. And I am seeing the result of it. I am seeing ministries that are being started. I'm getting emails uh, every two or three days for people wanting resources. So that particular prayer list, we reduced it down to 21 days. And it is on the Singles Network website um, that you need to download and make a commitment to pray for 21 straight days because we are seeing some revival happening. We are seeing some changes happening. We're seeing some doors opening. And I can't uh, contribute it to anything but the work of God and the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of those who made a commitment to pray. So anyway, so I just got back from being gone for this tour. Hey, everybody. It's so great. Bob. Hey, Freddie. Hey, Debbie. Um, so I just got back from this tour and it's been amazing. Been wonderful uh, meeting all these great people. And so I've just uh, had, a, had just a wonderful time and great experience. But when I travel, I really love to get an opportunity to hike. Um, I'm not the greatest hiker. I'm not, you know, Miss Athletic, but I do love hiking because one, I can, and then, and, and I don't want to ever take that for granted, but also um, I hike because I love seeing nature. I love seeing the great outdoors. I love seeing different places that God uh, shows me. Well, so last, um, this past week, I had a wonderful um, lady who donated a, uh, a three nights in Branson, Missouri, after I got through working there, that I could just rest. And so one day, I, I basically spent the entire day working on my newsletter, in which some of you get that every every month. And so, and I just slept, uh, I slept in. The next day, I decided I want to go hiking. So I did a little bit of research, you know, I went on my computer looking for different places. And and one place I found uh, was called um, Dogwood Canyon, but they wanted $23 just to get in the gate. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to pay it, you know. So I kept researching and I found this place called, let me look up the name real quick, Lakeside Forest. And it wasn't too far from where I was staying. So I got my hiking boots on, my extra water, you know, my you know, extra tissues, the normal stuff that I carry when I hike in North Carolina in the mountains here. And, um, and so I briefly looked at the website just to kind of get an idea of what they offered. And one of the trails included 318 steps down to the, the river uh, that's in Branson. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I could go down them and I'm not sure I can make them back up. And and, uh, and so I wasn't real confident about doing that, but I looked briefly and I saw the trails and I'm like, this is good, no problem. So, you know, I also noticed that on the website, it did say that the trails had markers and the markers had the little UPC code, the little barcode um, that lets you put it on your phone and you can find it where you are, which is great because in the North Carolina mountains, you can't even give it a phone signal in most of our hikes, much less have a place that you could scan. So I was like, oh, that's great. That's even better. You know, obviously it's going to be an easy hike, no problems. And so I started. Well, I, I, right at the beginning, I had a fairly uh, peaceful feeling about this hike. And, and, uh, and if you know me uh, well, and you've heard enough of my stories, you, you know that I sometimes have interesting adventures and sometimes I uh, get myself in trouble some, sometimes. And so um, I was you know, feeling pretty good. And then I pulled into the parking lot and I noticed there was only four cars. Now, you know, that's not the end of the world. I mean, but four cars hiking by myself, you know, I'm like, you know, how big is this place? And where are the hikers? And, you know, I don't know. And, and then my mom had texted and she go, oh, I, I wish you weren't going by yourself. But I really wanted to spend time with the Lord. And I really didn't want to have anybody. And plus, who would it be? I was by myself, you know. And so I just said, oh, this will be fine. And, 
And, um, but then I was starting to kind of not have a peaceful feeling. I don't really know, you know, complete, I'm like, I can't explain it, but I was like, hi, oh, you know, maybe I, I, I'm going to call my friend Roseanne and I'm going to talk to her. And, and, and so I just, you know, started hiking on the trail. And in the beginning, the hike was, trail was really big. Like it was like 20 feet across and it was gravel and, uh, and, and like wide open spaces. And so I called, uh, my friend Roseanne and we started talking and, um, and I really wanted to journal. And, and so I was going to talk to her for a while and then I was going to sit down somewhere and, and just spend some time with the Lord. So, like I said, the path was pretty wide, and then I got to this little area where it was really beautiful with picnic tables, and it had a gorgeous view of the other mountain and the river, and uh, some of you, if you're on my Facebook page, you would have seen that, and it was really, really pretty, and so I continued to talk to Roseanne, and, and I had like a little on an earpiece or whatever, and so then, you know, as I was walking, I noticed that the path got a little bit more narrow, and then it was pretty much like two to three feet wide, and kind of rocky and and uh, and it also kind of moved away from the river and deeper into the forest like there is nothing but trees like on you know this side this side behind me in front of me nothing but trees and I and I did see a mile marker number five and it was the I, I told Roseanne on the phone I said you know it's weird that I've just now seen a mile marker um, or a marker, whatever, and, um, and, and not realize that, well, there was probably others, I just missed them somehow, but I went ahead and, you know, just didn't worry about it too much, and, and so I, I ended up sitting down on this bench and just resting for a little bit, um, and then she's like, well, I gotta go, and I said, yeah, no problem, I said, she says, be safe, I'm like, sure, and so I just sat there for a little bit and pulled out my journal and wrote, wrote a little bit in my journal, and then I went to get up, and I was like, um, which, which way did I come? And, and, and I'm like, well, you know, I mean, it's not that big of a deal because I, because, because my goal was I was just going to go back the way that I came because I didn't look at the website to really know how, how, how long the paths were or how, you know, and so I just thought, well, I'm just going to try and go back so I don't go any deeper into these woods, you know, and, and there was nobody on the path. Like there was no, one person. I hadn't seen anybody in at least a half an hour. And so I was like, you know, I, I don't, I don't remember. Like was the bench on the left or was the bench on the right? And I, and I, I kind of laughed to myself a little bit because I was like, you know, this is, and then the anxiety crept in. All of a sudden I was just like, uh, okay. I really do not remember. And so I was just like, well, you know what? I, I'm i just going to start walking. And, you know, and if I see that mile marker number five again, at least I know I've passed that. But and I think it was on my left or could have been on my right. But I figured if I saw five, then I would look for four and three and two and one and go back to where I was. You know, simple, no problem, right? Okay. Well, I started to walk and I decided, you know, I'll go this way. And so I walked and I walked and I walked and I didn't look familiar and I didn't see my marker five. And I said, okay, uh, hmm, huh. I think I went the wrong way. So I turn around and by this time I'm almost jogging. Okay. I'm just telling you, like, I don't jog. Right. So I'm starting to speed up a little bit because I'm like, you know, like I'm I'm getting a little afraid um, that I am lost. And like, how can I be lost? I mean, I came from one direction, so I just have to go back that direction. But when I started to walk, it didn't look familiar and I got concerned. So then all of a sudden I saw mile marker five. I was like, great. So I decided I'm going to scan it. So I scanned it and it showed me I was on a path, but not a path, just in the general vicinity of several paths and all of the paths had fives and fours and threes and twos. I had no idea what path I was on and I had no idea what number corresponded to what path. And so then I thought, well, I'll GPS myself, you know, and it literally put me in the middle of a forest. And so now I'm getting a little bit concerned and like, how am I going to figure this out? So I turn around again and I start walking the other direction and I'm walking faster and faster. And all of a sudden I heard a noise and I, and it wasn't no squirrel and wasn't no bird. It, it was like 
like like a big animal. And and I'm realizing I don't have a stick. I don't have any bear spray. Cause see, understand when I hike in North Carolina mountains, uh, I go somewhere. If I'm alone, I go somewhere where I know there'll be a lot of people. Or I go with a lot of people. And so it's not really been an issue to have a stick or bear spray. So, but I'm by myself and I'm just froze. And then I'm like, I look over to the left and all I see is this massive body of an animal that's like this big and this big walk into the woods. And first thought was a mountain lion. I'm like, oh my gosh. How am I going to fight off a mountain lion? And here's the thing. I could have dialed 911, but how would I tell them where I was? How would they find me? In the meantime, I'm kitty food. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to do any good to call somebody over an animal. And so I froze. I didn't move. I kind of looked. And I'm like, and I just started praying. Dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, get me out of this mess. Dear Lord, dear Lord, protect me. Dear Lord, dear Lord, I'm stupid again, stupid again, stupid again. Oh my goodness. And I could just hear my mom. Like going, oh, why did she put me through this, right? And so I kept looking to see what it was, and it was a deer. Oh, praise the Lord, it was a deer. Not a problem for me. He doesn't want anything to do with me. I don't want anything to do with him. But I decided I needed a stick. So I quickly found a big, long stick, and I thought, you know, at least I would have a fighting chance. Maybe. And it made me feel better anyway. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to turn around again. And I'm just going to walk. And hopefully it's going to be the right play, the right direction. And I had walked back and forth in a 10, 15 minute stretch of a hiking trail. And I was so turned around, so confused. And I still didn't see any people. But I, I did not recognize any direction that I'd come from. I really had no idea where I was. So I just kept walking. And I walked. And I prayed. And I walked. And I prayed. And then I was just hoping I wouldn't see another animal. And here's the thing, because I was talking to Roseanne, I didn't pay attention to my surroundings. I wasn't really sure where I was. And so by this time I said, you know what, I, I'm just gonna keep walking and eventually maybe I'll see somebody and eventually maybe there'll be mile markers and it's gotta come out somewhere. As I started walking farther and literally didn't recognize the logs that were on the ground, I didn't recognize the dry creek bread, I didn't recognize this tree that had fallen over, I don't have any memory of any of those things and they could have been in my original path, but I was talking the whole time and wasn't paying attention. I could hear a highway off in the distance and I remember there was not a, I don't remember there being a highway because I remember there was a river, but you know it was quite far away. So then I decided I'm just going to sit down on this bench and pray. And so probably some of you were listening to me and laughing, but I just sat down and I prayed. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a hiker. And he was the cutest guy, about 22, 23 years old. And I said to him, I said, he had, he had the nicest smile. I said, um, he says, you're all right. And I'm like, um, I think I'm lost. He said, <laughs> He said, you're lost? I said, yeah. I said, um, I don't know which way I came in. And I was on the phone with my friend talking. And I didn't pay attention to which direction. And I've gotten turned around. And I just feel a little lost. And he said, um, <laughs> he started to giggle a little bit. He's like, uh, you can't get lost. It's a big loop. If I had looked at the map, okay. He said, yeah, it's a big loop. So eventually you're going to come out to where you started. And I said, well, I haven't seen any mile markers at all. He said, yeah, there's not any uh, for, uh, you know, past seven for some reason. I think someone broke them or tore them down. But you, when you keep going, you'll start to see the mile markers for like four, three, two, and one. And so I had literally come in the back way and didn't know it because I didn't see any mile markers. And so he said, yeah, you're fine. Just keep going. You're, you're good. And, and he was laughing because he said, he, he, you know, because obviously it's a big loop. Like, what are you, crazy lady, you know? And I said, well, can, can I follow you? Can I follow you? And he said, nah, you're going to be fine. No, you're going to be fine. You go ahead. You'll, you'll figure it out. So I still walked faster um, because I surely didn't want to be, uh, I didn't know what was chasing the deer. <laughs> and so I surely didn't want to find out if something was chasing the deer. 
So what are these lessons that God is trying to show me? What are these lessons? Well, God has given me a few lessons. Let me share these lessons with you. Um, so when I checked the website, um, one of the things that it said was to look at your trail ahead of time so that you know where it starts and where it ends. I didn't because I thought, I'm just going to walk as far as I can walk and then I'm going to just walk back. Like, how? why would I need to look at a trail? You know, why do I need to look at it? I mean, I'm just literally... And I didn't take into the context that maybe there would be a problem or maybe I would get lost or maybe I would be on the phone or any of these things. I didn't expect any issues and any problems. I was expecting my plan to work. I think about those people in the Bible who had plans of their own as well. They didn't expect things to change, that God would would not alter their path or their direction or their life. I think about Adam and Eve and their plan, right? And Moses and Noah. Um, how about Paul? You know, Paul went from killing Christians to saving them. I also recently got to see Esther at the Light and Sound Theater in Branson. Very powerful. Esther is a young woman, and I'm sure she's expecting to get married and have children, but God had a totally different path for her. Isaiah 55, 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. I know that God, uh, I was trying to do my path. I, I was on there doing what I wanted to do, or expecting what I was going to do. And sometimes that changes. And so God gave me a very valuable lesson in the importance that I should have looked at the map ahead of time to see that where the path was. Uh, but to also in life, when God wants to change your path, are you prepared and ready for that? I also learned a lesson that I should have waited and gone later in the day when I saw more cars in the parking lot. I could have just come back, but, you know, that's me. I want to go. I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it, you know. And I had made my own plan, and, and I should have waited because right when I got there, I was uneasy that there were only four cars. When I finally did leave about two and a half hours later, there was like 30 cars in the parking lot and there were people everywhere. Much safer, right? I know I should have had someone to hike with me, but I was not there with anyone. And sometimes, you know, you just need to be alone with the Lord. But I got plenty of time alone with the Lord. Uh, fear and lots of prayer. Okay. Psalm 33, 20 says, Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. I also should have better prepared that although I had my hiking boots on, I had extra water, a windbreaker, snacks, I was in an un unknown area and I was alone and I should have had a walking stick and bear spray considering so few people were hiking. It's not only important to be prepared while living on this earth from our work uh, to traveling on vacation, you know, making sure your car is in good shape, it's got gas, got your cell phone charged, uh, to, you know, also preparing when you're raising kids or, you know, and any preparation for there, or even building friendships because, you know, some friendships can lead to intentional friendships and to intentional dating, which I talk about in the Intentional Relationship Bible Study, but also being prepared to share your faith. First Peter 3, 15 through 16 says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience, so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it's better, if it's God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. Um, I will say that I did get a chance to share with a few people after I figured out where I was. I ended up looping all the way around back to that big area with the picnic tables and got to talk to some different people. Um, but I'll tell you what, I got to talk to even more people as I traveled in this latest tour. And some of them really spoke to my heart. And, you know, God is always a Christian. You need to be ready and prepared. Sometimes it's just simply saying, can I pray for you? Sometimes it's saying, God bless you. Sometimes it's just a nice smile. Sometimes it's just being nice to somebody, right? But being prepared to share your faith, to share something about Christ, to share your story, that scripture tells us that we need to be ready. 
often we don't share because we're not ready. We're afraid of rejection. We're afraid we won't know something. We're afraid they'll attack us. But again, when, when the enemy get, through people attacks you, and they're really attacking Christ, and so, because that's the real goal of the enemy. He doesn't, he doesn't want Christ to, to get, you know, he doesn't want anybody to know the Lord. And so he does that even with some of you that are watching who don't know the Lord. His goal is to keep you ignorant. His goal is to keep you lost. His goal is for you to go to hell. His goal is for you to live without the peace that comes from knowing the Lord. Understand, problems are problems. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to have problems. But the fact is, if you have Christ to help you with those problems, when you accept him, as your Lord and Savior. So I met some interesting people this time. One person in particular was a man named Ezra. Now Ezra is a believer and I met him in a thrift store, but I noticed his hand was crumpled up and he'd had a stroke not long before then. And he said he'd gone from not being able to speak at all or walk to now he was walking and talking and he was thanking the Lord, but he still was praying for this hand to be able to open up so that he didn't have to use a cane. I got the honor to pray with him he was the sweetest man in the whole world. Then I met this woman named Selena. A bunch of us went to lunch in Branson, and we met a lovely young lady, young single mom named Selena. She said, yes, would you, we asked her, can we pray for her uh, while we're praying for our meal? And she stood there with us, and we prayed for her young son, who was struggling with some, some behavioral issues, that we believe. And, and so we got a chance to encourage her, and and one of the ladies with us actually had a word from God for her that God was going to use her son in mighty ways. Then I met a wonderful lady named Yolanda who shared with me the struggles. There had been so many deaths in her family of losing her son and losing three brothers in one year and, and just the struggles that she was going through. And I got a chance to pray for her, but I mainly just listened. And then I met a lady on Saturday morning I met several ladies, but one lady in particular wanted to wait after I spoke, and she wanted to wait till the crowd had cleared. And she spoke to me, and she said, can I just tell you that your story that you shared about a, a gentleman that you were in a relationship with in your 20s, in which you were out of the will of God, you were living with him, and you were struggling, and you, you kind of date guys, and then you try to be their friends. And she said, I'm that woman too. She says, I want to make better choices too. And I got a chance to spend some time with her and encourage her and, and uh, to let her know about that, you know, I get it, I understand. But all these years of all the mistakes I've made, I tried to use that to be able to share with others, just like I'm sharing with you. Here's another thing that I learned from this crazy hiking is I should have talked with Roseanne prior or in another area where it was the big area, like I shouldn't have been talking with her and walking on the trail unless I made a specific uh, comment of I'm sitting on the bench on the left or something because I simply did not remember and I thought I would. Maybe that's old age creeping in. I don't know. Also, listen to the sounds around you. I all had not heard any of the traffic, and as a result, I got confused, turning me in circles over and over and over. I started to sweat. It wasn't even hot outside. I was getting anxious. I could hear my heart beating stronger and stronger. But who is the author of confusion? The enemy. 1 Corinthians 14.33 says, For God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. What is the enemy's goal? Still kill and destroy. John 10.10. 10. We know the goal of the enemy and that we need to be aware of the goal of God and the goal of the enemy and making all of our decisions in life from the simplest decisions of where am I going to park to what am I going to eat at a restaurant or should I spend this money when I buy something to making the decision where you're going to move, what kind of work you're going to have, you know, what church you're going to go to, to even sharing your faith to also who you're going to marry. Do you know that marriage is the second greatest decision you'll ever make in your life? First is, is your salvation, but marriage is your second. And so it is such an important thing that needs to be in our churches. Join me in praying that more churches would understand the need and the value to minister to single adults, to help single adults become whole in Christ so they can make great decisions on who they choose to marry. 
Well, another final lesson is that God protected me as usual. Mm. He provided a safe hiker, but I know God still wishes. Still, Chris, Chris, Chris. He wished I had used more wisdom ahead of time. Last weekend, I spoke to the Midwest Christian Singles. We had a retreat, and I talked about this a little bit last Sunday, but we learned that God is our refuge, our fortress, and our rock. Psalm 91 says, 1 through 6 says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the dead, deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night um, or on hikes, nor the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. How about you? Do you need more wisdom? Do you need God to protect you? Do you need help? Do you need guidance? Do you need to listen to wise friends, including your mother? Do you need to be better prepared? Do you need to spend more time with the Lord? Do you need to draw closer? What do you need? Or do you need to accept Christ as your Savior? Or do you need to renew your relationship with the Lord? Do you need to talk to God and say, you know, Lord, I, I have not made you priority. I'm not sharing with other people. I'm not consistent in my church attendance. I'm not consistent in my quiet time. What do you need from God? You know what's funny? The hiker looked like he was one of the disciples. He he had this long beard. He was young. But uh, with my reputation, he was probably one of God's angels because I, I get in trouble a lot. You know, the hiker wouldn't let me follow him out. I shared that with you a minute ago. He told me that, you know what, you've got this. You'll be fine. Because you know what, he already knew the path. He'd been on the path. And God had me too. And God has you. He already knows your path that he's put you on. He's there to guide us. We just have to let him guide us. John 1, 9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Let's pray. To Heavenly Father, thank you for this time again with my friends. Thank you for getting me safely out of that forest. Thank you for you putting people in place that do protect us and help us and guide us. Thank you for the lessons that you taught me again that I'm never too old to learn and learn and no one is ever too old. Lord, I pray for others that are listening to this that maybe are struggling in their own forest. They're struggling in their own path and, and they're afraid because of what's in front of them and, and the unknown. So I pray you'll be with them. Give them peace that only comes from you. I pray for that person that maybe doesn't know you either that they would accept you as their savior, as, your, as their savior. They would know that they can't get to God except through Jesus and they need you to forgive them for their sins for we are all sinners and we all need you, Lord. Thank you for this time. Thank you for getting me home safely. In Christ's name, amen. Well, everybody, it's another half hour has gone by. Please share this if you would for me. Let people know. We are excited about Labor Day. It'll be here before you know it. Labor Day is our big singles retreat that we do. Um, it's also, we have breakfast, lunch, and learns that we also do some leadership training for those of you who are a leader or a pastor or, uh, you know, you're married that leads singles, divorce care or grief share or some type of ministry like that. We welcome you to our retreat. Um, we are uh, seeing God already do some amazing things even prior to Labor Day, but please go to LaborDaySingles.org and register um, so that you can be a part of this. Last year, we had over 300 that had registered from around the country, and it is a life-changing weekend. It is There's no retreat like it, but you can't experience it if you don't go. Also, if you like to cruise, I'm doing a singles cruise in December uh, to the Dominican Republic in Coco Cay. And then next June, I'm going to be doing a cruise to Alaska for marrieds and singles. We've got uh, programming for both. And again, Alaska was just, I went three years ago. It's amazing. More information, please go to my website, thesinglesnetwork.org, chriswakakoministries.org, intentionalrelationshipsolutions.org, and labordaysingles.org. Till the next time, everybody. God bless. Thank you.